<laughs> the one thing I wish I knew before my first skiing in Italy. What would I have done differently? The most important. Why? I'll tell you in a minute. Now, let's have a closer look at the destination. Monte Rosa is Europe's best kept secret. Best, best, best. Find Monte Rosa in every guide about skiing. Is it all true? Uh, partly. And I'll tell you why later. Why we chose Monte Rosa. Well, for starters, it's in Italy. <laughs> you know, the Alps and Italian food. Oops. And Italian food and guaranteed snow. So the reviews promised. Plus, the majority of the slopes are red, which seemed like a perfect opportunity for us, intermediate skiers. Every single review promised no crowds, no lift lines, and almost free slopes. It sounded too good to be true, but we took the bait. The most important skiing in Montrosa seemed to be relatively cheap, twice cheaper than in admired Switzerland, Zermatt, for instance although Monterosa is very close to it. After going through every possible review, I finally decided to book a hotel in Alanya. It's one of the three main valleys in the area, but don't ask me to pronounce the other two. I chose Alanya because I found a great deal on a place called Residence Calipa. Eight minutes walk from the lift and unlimited free Italian coffee? Sign me up! Speaking of coffee, we got a discount at a nearby restaurant that we strongly recommend. But I'll tell you more about it later. You're thinking about how we reached Alanya. We had a long car trip with pit stops for sightseeing, including Ascona, a spring paradise in the middle of winter. If you want more details on possible routes, falls, and drive through places, drop a comment and I'll make another video. Okay, I can talk for ages about planning, getting there, and buying ski passes online. Let's move on to the do's and don'ts in Monte Rosa. Number one thing to do is uh, Skiing. <laughs> Remember I told you about my expectations, whether there will be snow, free slopes and no lines? Well, it's true. We were there in the beginning of March and we always had enough space on the slope. Sometimes we were even alone and held all the space for ourselves. Key rental points are easy to find and some of the discounts depending on your accommodation place. We highly recommend going down the fun slope complete with bells, metal plates, tunnels and corners. You can find it here. We had an amazing time together there. What about the views? Insane! The highest reachable point is 3030 meters with a frozen lake and several restaurants to refuel between runs. Just be sure to actually go up the mountain to find the snow. Think to do number two. Think number two to do. Thing to do, number two, second thing to do. Okay, walk the river. Don't worry, I'm not expecting you to walk on water like some kind of superhero. Each valley in Monte Rosa ski area has a small river. It's like a natural playground, plenty of stones to hop on and rocks to climb. Not to mention gathering small stones of your regular shapes and bringing them at home later. My daughter loved the place and I felt like the coolest dad ever. Just make sure to be careful. Moving on number three. It's time to channel in a night in shining armor and explore the medieval town. Most of the buildings in Alanya, as well as in other nearby towns, were built in 16th century and they still stay the same. It's like time travel. You can play hide and seek too, if you're not afraid to get lost. The streets are wonderful. Check it out. Number four thing to do. It's all about getting active and go hiking. There are perfect hiking routes in the area. We found some ruins to explore, some flowers to smell. Well, you can smell not only flowers there. But hey, that's all part of the adventure, right? Number five thing to do is enjoy the local cuisine. Whether you choose to buy some local products Oops. and cook at your place, like we did a couple of times, or visit local restaurants, you'll be satisfied. We couldn't resist the pleasure and kept returning to the restaurant named Sanosta, Chanosta, Canosta. Honestly, I really need to learn some Italian. Great beer for me, yummy desserts for my daughter, superb and relatively cheap dishes. It's a strong five stars from us. Not to mention we received a discount because we stayed at the Calipa residence. And now, welcome! 
to the don'ts of Monte Rosa, the show where we explore the ways you can mess up your ski trip but keep it adventurous. Now, the one thing I wish I knew before my first skiing in Italy don't go the slope if it's closed. Captain Obvious! Sounds ridiculously obvious, right? And yet we made the mistake. On the third day of our stay in Alania, as usual, we went up the mountain and discovered that the slope to another valley was closed. But did we let a red fence stop us? Of course not. At first we tried some blue slopes, but the snowstorm and limited visibility made it feel like we were skiing in a washing machine. So eventually we followed the rebellious crowd and crossed off the red fence, only to discover a clear sky just in a minute of riding. That day we tried the fun slope, explored the other side of the neighbor valley, in other words, had an exciting skiing day. And just when we were happy and tired, we found ourselves stranded on the wrong side of the mountain with a closed lift and nightfall approaching. Oopsie! The red fans must have known something. So, what did we do? We found a taxi almost one hour of searching and spent a fortune to get back to our place in Alanya. Lesson learned? When in doubt, follow the white rabbit. I mean, uh, follow the signs of the fence. But hey, <laughs> at least we can laugh about it right now, right? And if you want to hear more about our adventures, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And let me know in comments if you think the local taxi drivers are secretly plotting to take advantage of clueless tourists like us. The last two days in Alanya the pass was still closed due to some crazy strong winds. But we learned our lessons and decided to take it easy for once. Instead of risking our time and money on the forbidden slopes, we decided to explore the two remaining runs that were open on our side of the mountain. And you know what? It was actually pretty awesome. We also took advantage of the downtime to build a snowman, or at least something that vaguely resembled one. And of course, we enjoyed the breathtaking beauty of the landscape. Seriously, you need some top sunglasses to handle that glorious sunshine. Check out the link to mine below. Answering the question, what would I have done differently in our first ever ski trip to Italy? First, I would stay in Grissini. Huh? <sighs> I would stay in Grissoni. Forgive me, my Italian friends. It's located in the Middle Valley and has access to most of the cool places. Alani mountainside is the poorest for slopes, although it has the longest black one. Second, I would take my tripod with me and feel myself saying this in actual mountains. I've got another trip for you. What trip? It was my trip. I've got another tip for you. And no, it's not just don't ski into trees, although that's definitely a good one to keep in mind. The most important advice is to have a chat with the ski lift walkers. They may seem like they're just there to press some buttons and make sure you don't fall off the lift, but they are wealth of information. These friendly folks, well, mostly friendly, know everything about the mountain conditions, lift schedules, where to go, what to avoid what slopes are closed, and so on. Take your life as an adventure. 